Good morning, everyone. Oh. Welcome back. Hi. We have Karen, <laughs> who is focused paying on Paying attention. These, paying attention. Anything that we say today is not meant to diagnose you or provide any type of medical care. This is just to, meant to educate you, to give you information so you could research, okay? So that's our disclaimer. We're not going to cure any diseases today. Um, so, Karen, it's the day after Halloween, okay? So. Yes. Um, that was very uh, uneventful. Uneventful. We yeah. were so ready with all of this great um, sugar-free stuff and in they, a new neighborhood. We're all excited. I, I'm not a Halloween person. They didn't. Uh, they didn't like pumpkins last year. And everything. Last year they didn't like the little salad mixes that we gave them, and the year before they didn't like the pencils. So, anyway, I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. We but got. We have a lot of questions. Two doorbells. Yeah. It was very sad. Um, okay. So we have the holidays coming up. We have Easter and we have uh, what Fourth of July. And uh, so I want to just mention um, like some things that people can do. Like when they, what what goes through someone's, an average person, what goes through their mind during the holidays in relationship to keto, intermittent fasting, and all this food? What's going on? Are they concerned about it? Are they trying to deal with it? I think it? you have two. I think you have two groups. Yeah. You have the group that gets stressed out. Okay. Because they're like, crap. It's almost Thanksgiving. And who knows? Maybe they're a disaster already with Halloween. Hopefully not, but Thanksgiving's a tough one. And then there's Christmas and New Year's. And uh, that can, that you see the stressors, and then you have the guys that are really, really excited to try keto recipes. Now, do you find that a lot of people between the, these holidays, they tend to take a break from keto, and then they go back? January 1 every year? Between the holidays? Yeah. Or do you mean on between. the holidays? Of course, on, but between two. What, what's your thought? I think it's really hard come Thanksgiving because it's sort of like the endless stream of um, holidays and office parties and social parties and oh, yeah. okay. Christmas parties. And so I, I think see. it's a tough one. It doesn't have to be if you're doing one meal a day and you're kind of careful. You can usually find something, but think by and large it's a, a challenging time of year so I think um, there's a couple things that I would recommend number yeah. one um, go I mean if you're gonna go off go off but then go right back on the next day that's what I would that's number one number two start to prepare your keto friendly um, sweets and desserts because a lot of people don't prepare for that right and then they don't have anything so at least if, if you have some keto cookies um, it's going to be a lot better. Wouldn't you agree? I would agree. So it's time to cook and make I'm things. having a full Thanksgiving. I'm having everything. I mean, not the stuffing. Or as we say in Pennsylvania, the filling. Because <laughs> it's filling. Got it. Okay. Don't you want to know what we're having for Thanksgiving? Um, you want to surprise me? What are we having? Turkey. Okay, good. Organic. Good. Cauliflower mash. Awesome. Beans, asparagus. Good. Squash. I'm excited. Strawberry pie. Keto friendly, of course. Pumpkin pie. Cheesecake. Good. And pumpkin strawberry. You think about that. Hey, Carrie, you're from Pecan Pennsylvania. Pie. Sorry. Thank you. Carrie, get that you've been waiting patiently. How are you? And how are you? you had a question. Carrie? Hi, yeah. Hi. Um, yeah. Hi. Listen, I just want to thank you guys, um, both you and Karen. Um, you guys are so user-friendly. Um, but I have a question. My son's 14, you know, that age, are kind of cool guys and stuff. And he, his self-esteem went down. He had um, acne starting. And my husband had it pretty bad in high school. So I was holding my breath. And I tried all the over-counter. We went to a dermatologist. Nothing seemed to really get it under control. I did come across um, one of your podcasts on it. And, I mean, I've, I've listened to all your podcasts, so I'm such a good librarian for you guys. Um, but I'll tell you, the mix that you had me get him on, the pantothenic acid, mm -hmm. the zinc, raw zinc and the cod liver oil mm -hmm. it has done amazing results like wow. his confidence is back he 
is so thrilled. And I think you really need a big pat on the back for that because you know how kids are, especially that age. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. This stuff is miracle stuff. I just can't believe dermatologists couldn't help us with that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to thank you so much for that. And he thanks you. Nick thanks you. But my thing is, can I just keep him on this? Like, you know, these outbreaks will probably go on all the way through high school. He's in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. Is it safe for me to give it to him every day? Good question, Carrie. Uh, absolutely, you should. Um, in fact, um, I had acne really bad in high school, so it can very, it can very much introvert you. You know, it can make you very shy. And... Um, pretty bad. So it's a very simple thing. If you can put someone on keto and doing a bit of intermittent fasting, and for kids like that, you do three meals, no snacks, that should be enough. But the cutting down the carbs because the insulin raises the androgens, uh, both in women and men. Um, in a female, it could be the cystic acne, which is uh, related to possibly um, estrogen, but it's mainly going to be androgens. Um, but for your son, the zinc, the B5, the cod liver oil has the vitamin D, the vitamin A, which is the natural version. Um, and if he doesn't do too much sugar, that should handle the skin, which, is, which really is a huge thing for someone's self-esteem and just their out- outlook on life. So that's so awesome. Yeah, keep them on it. Not a problem. Make sure you have foods high in those things as well. Um, but I think everyone should be on cod liver oil. It's one of the best natural things for vitamin D and vitamin A. Thanks, Carrie. All right, uh, Diana, you're from Laguna Beach, California. You had a question about your leg cramps. Go ahead. Yes, I am so thankful to you. You have improved the quality of my life. And I was the one who called a couple weeks ago and you recommended to increase the salt because I kept taking so many electrolytes and still had the leg cramps. And the salt improved me 75%. Wow. Wow. And I'm so thankful. Last night I slept nine hours and I only woke up one time with just mild cramping in the legs, not screaming cramps. And it was really the hiatal hernia and the racing heart that got me last night. So my question is, is I, my salt was started at one and a quarter teaspoons that I was taking and I went all the way up to three teaspoons within a 24 hour period of time. And now I backed it down to about two and a half teaspoons of salt. Mm-hmm. Is that too much salt? I think you're good. Uh, if you're exercising a lot, you need a little more salt. If you're not exercising, you probably need, uh, you know, one and one to one and a half to maybe two teaspoons of salt. Um, I would definitely do Himalayan salt. I would also the next thing that you should try, um, Diana, is you should try adding. And I'm I'm guessing you already tried the other things that I recommended, but. Um, I would try acidifying your body a little bit more. Now, we know about the apple cider vinegar. We know about betaine hydrochloride. There's another acidifier, which I really, really like. And I just did a video on it, and it's called ammonium chloride. It's, the video is not called ammonium chloride, but I think it's um, cold. Oh, it's an expectorant uh, video. But cal- um, ammonium chloride is, you can get it from Amazon. You can get it all over the place. It's very inexpensive. It's a systemic acidifier. You take some of that. It's great for um, kind of getting mucus out of your body, but it's also good to acidify the body uh, if, you're, if you're running down, if you're a little sick. Um, and then also it would be really good to help increase more mineral absorption into the tissues. Realize, too, with this cramping thing, if you're deficient, it could take quite a few months to really fully get you back to where you need to be. So great. Um, Keep going and let us know how that works, Diana. Thanks for calling. And Karen, yeah, we are available for a question. We. We. Good, good. Well, on Facebook, uh, I have Teresa who says, she's tried keto and it hasn't worked for me. Okay. Sad face. I'm 53, hypothyroid, adrenal fatigue, complete hysterectomy, and gastric bypass 20 years ago. Please help. Is that the same person? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think you're going to have to do, um, you're going to have to enhance your diet with uh, certain nutrients because you had gastric bypass. And that's probably what you're running into is you're going to, you have a lot of nutritional deficiencies. So you probably do, you're going to have to do trace minerals, maybe a liquid 
you're going to have to do the B vitamins and liquid maybe vitamin D uh, and even uh, an amino acid because um, profile because it's really hard to get that just breaking down meat. So if you did something called, it's called keto essential aminos, works really good for, actually here it is right here. This is just good for um, getting protein in your body. Um, because when you when you gastric, gastric gastric bypassed, you really are limited as far as how much protein you can extract and put into the tissues. And I'm not even talking about absorption. I'm talking about eating a piece of protein and having it turn into body tissue. Most of most of it's going to be wasted. Um, if you have an egg, you'll be lucky if you have 50% converting to body tissue. That's the best. And then we come down to like meat and fish. That's like 37%. So the great majority of it is either wasted or used as glucose. So this product might be beneficial for you because 99% of it goes right into body tissue and it's easy to break down So because it's already amino acids. So it goes is in. that for everybody or those percentages or is that just for this person because no. of the gastric bypass? No, I did a video on protein and I suggest everyone watch it. Um, there's all this, you know, talk about like how much of that protein is actually turning into body tissue. And this goes beyond just absorption through your stomach and then trying to overcome the barrier of lack of stomach acid, um, digestive problems, inflammation, all these other things, and age. We're talking about like how much of this protein turns into body tissue. If we go down the list, we eggs are the highest, and then we go down to like meat and fish, and then um, dairy is like even lower. So you're getting the great majority of that protein not even turning into tissue or helping you repair. It's being wasted either as um, waste of your urine or glucose as fuel. So when you take a good amino acid blend, you can actually um, have better recovery, better, less waste, and, feel, and, and it, it improves a lot of people with protein deficiencies in general. All right. Okay. All right. Do we have anyone listening in from Kenosha, Wisconsin? Yes. Oh, we do? Good. What a coincidence. He read my notes. Yes, Kenosha, Wisconsin That's is in the I'm house. From. And that is where Dr. Berg is from. So that is very important. Thank you for representing. Well, can we find out where he is from in that city? Like what okay. road? What He's on YouTube or she is on YouTube. Yeah, I'd like to find out. Um, is it close to 52nd Avenue? What street do you live on? <laughs> Highway E and 52nd Avenue. Okay, good. So now um, Becky wants to know, uh, she's got vivid dreams. Yes. What to do? That is a classic vitamin B1 deficiency. So there's a couple reasons why someone's B1 deficient. Either they're doing too many carbs, refined carbs, or sugar, or drinking a bit too much tea. Tea and coffee deplete B1. Um, so I'm not saying don't drink it, just realize you need to take more Bs. Also, if you go through stress, you can be B deficient. So the vivid dreams are a good way to uh, know that you need more B1. Now, what's the best source of B1? Nutritional yeast. Very good. Very good, Karen. You're so smart. I get the bell. You're so darn smart. Okay, good. So here's another. Yeah. This is an interesting question. Monosodium citrate. Yeah. You ever hear that? Yeah. Is it any good? Can you take <laughs> it on keto? Is it any good? Now, the question is, should, can you take it on keto? I, um, I, I don't you, know what it is. You can. I never and, heard of that. Um, you can take it, and some people take that to prevent kidney stones. It's not a problem. I think it's it's fine. I, it's just an, a, it's something that will combine with the oxalates and uh, help you. So I, I think it's an okay thing. Yeah. Fair enough, Dr. Berg. Fair yeah. enough. Now, Karen, I do have a very interesting quiz coming up. Okay. So don't leave. Okay. Um, but we need to go to Jan from Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee. Are you there? I Hello. am. Hello. Hi. I am here. Great. Hi. Hi. What's your question? Can you hear me? Yep, yeah. I can hear you perfectly. Okay. I've been doing keto for over a year, and I'm really interested uh, in doing intermittent fasting, which I have been doing, but my question is, can does uh, putting cream or putting artificial sweetener in your coffee stop autophagy. Mm -hmm. um, I've read so much stuff. Some people say you can and it doesn't matter. Other people say do not put anything in it because it will break the fast. So okay. 
uh, is there a scientific evidence uh, for this answer? Yeah. Okay. So um, there are things that are, Jan, there are things that are really, 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 really important. And there's things that are less important. And I want to be able to help you differentiate that um, because then you can actually think with it. Um, yes, yeah, pretty much anything you eat other than water is going to break a fast to some degree. If it's breaking a fast, it does break autophagy. However, how much autophagy is it really interrupting with? If you're doing a small amount of cream with your coffee, if you're doing um, the sugar alcohols like erythritol, uh, things like that, uh, even just a tiny bit of uh, xylitol or stevia. Stevia is not going to really do much. You're going to probably break autophagy for like maybe 20 minutes, just a very small amount. So is it, is it worth it to not do that? It's up to you. Um, but it, there is not a lot of scientific data about exactly how long it's going to break this or do that. What, what you have to do is you just have to work with enough people to observe things and see how people do based on what they tell you, and that's what I'm telling you, is like you're going to have to try for yourself. If you're, all I'm going to say is if you have a really hard time losing weight and you're struggling and nothing's working, maybe you're going to be, have to be more strict on that. But for the average person, they can get by with some sugar alcohols and a little bit of cream in the coffee, a little bit of MCT oil. It's not going to be a problem. All right, thanks, Jan. And Diane, you're from, you're calling from Washington State. Gig Harbor, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. Hi. Okay, my question is, I have been doing keto for 10 months, and I used to have brunette hair. Then it turned gray, and since being on keto, it is starting to turn back to my original color. And I've asked my doctor about it, and she said she has no idea. So I am calling to ask you, why? Oh, that's great. Um, well, first of all, when you do keto and intermittent fasting, you do decrease something called oxidative stress because ketones are like an antioxidant. And intermittent fasting is definitely anti-inflammatory, and it can also create all sorts of anti-aging properties. Uh, this is another reason why when women, in, women go on intermittent fasting, Sometimes, even right after menopause, all of a sudden they start having their cycle again because things start working better hormonally. So I think what's happening with you is you're getting less oxidative stress because what's uh, causing the, the loss of pigment in your hair is um, an oxidant called hydrogen peroxide, which basically kind of takes out the pigment. And that's coming from an imbalance in too much oxidation versus antioxidants. Your body has an antioxidant network um, that it makes antioxidants. It also, you get it from the food. So when you go on keto, it takes this huge stress off that, and things start to work a lot better. So I think you're just getting um, a better af countering effect of hydrogen peroxide in your body, which is kind of a, a natural thing. Your, your cells actually, through normal metabolism, as a byproduct, make hydrogen peroxide. And that, that's what's doing it. Um, by the way, selenium is a really good remedy for those of you out there that you might want to, if you have a hypothyroid problem or whatever, that's a really good remedy to counter some of the oxidation in the body. It's called selenium. There's many more, too. Thanks, Diane. All right, Karen, over to you. What do you got? All right, good. So uh, here's a guy who says uh, he works out. His body is in really good shape, but he loses energy fast. Yeah, endurance. One of the, I tell you, the first thing that comes off my mind um, would be vitamin K2. And you can take D3 too, but K2 is fascinating. When I take K2, that hill by our house, mm -hmm. I can go up it and I, uh, without any problem. It's interesting. So vitamin K2 strengthens the heart. Now the other one is the B1. So I would take nutritional yeast. Um, I would recommend the new, uh, either that or the mitochondrial energy, which has um, a really high-end B1 in there, too. So that'll give you a lot of energy and, and endurance. The only other thing I was going to mention about that with the endurance is that I'm assuming you're doing keto right. and intermittent fasting correctly. I was going to say. He doesn't that, say, but... We that could be... Because if you're not, you're going to run out of gas pretty fast, especially if you're um, doing any type of long-distance type things. But... 
Okay, good. And now uh, Colleen is saying she's got numb toes. Any advice? Well, the, the best remedy, hands down, is benfotamine, okay? I will be releasing a video on that. Benfotamine, you've heard of benfotamine? You talk about it all the time. I wonder why we don't carry it or make one. Because it's so available. Anyone oh. can get it. Oh. Um, it's not hard to get. Um, if you are a diabetic and you're watching right now, you need to be on benfotamine. Benfotamine is, hands down, the best counter for damage or complications from diabetes. And one of it is uh, peripheral neuropathy, which is the problem with the nerves in the end of your feet. So benfotamine is a fat-soluble B vitamin that is deeper than the regular one. And it's wonderful for nerve problems, heart issues, kidney issues, and brain issues. Hmm. Do we take that? Um, no, we don't. <laughs> I will be bringing Okay. Well, I think we need to start taking that. We take everything else. I actually, I'm, I may have some. I'll have to show you some. I was just withholding this information. Uh, you can always, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but you can always get a couple more brain cells. It wouldn't hurt. It, w it wouldn't hurt. Right. It wouldn't hurt. Uh, now, um, Unnamed has a friend on yeah. keto. Yeah. We like these questions. My friend Talk, who's asking on asking for a friend. <laughs> on keto. Uh, is complaining because she has a lot of indigestion and acid. Um, why would that be? Well, that just means your stomach, and this is common, uh, is not acidic enough. So that she needs some betaine hydrochloride, apple cider vinegar. There's some other things that you can take too with the meal that are really, really good. Uh, fennel is really good. Um, peppermint tea is really good. But I think apple cider vinegar is your, your sure bet, and also um, something like betaine hydrochloride. Watch my video on indigestion. That's a really important one. Mm -hmm. And by the way, getting back to that lady with the numbness in her feet, yeah. she needs to take minimally 600 milligrams of benfotamine every single day. Wow. Okay? Mm -hmm. Take it with a meal because it's fat soluble. Get to know. No, note to self. Note Karen, to self. I think it's time for a quiz, okay? Okay. All right, guys. If you guys have checked out, check back in right now. Because this question is going to be very, very important. I want to know, I want to test your knowledge. Um, I'm trying to be the knowledge doc. I'm you trying are the to knowledge doc. Give doctor. people the knowledge so they That's can. That's all you do. You know, solve problems by themselves. So, because? Here, because we want to. Better knowledge. Equals better results. It's true. There you have it. Um, so, here, here's the thing What is healthier, people? of the world, um, organic or grass-fed? Which, which is healthier, grass-fed or organic? Go ahead and let us know, and let's test your knowledge. All right, while they're answering the I question, answer. well, we're going to definitely be asking you. <laughs> um, but let's go to <laughs> Teresa from Indiana Indianapolis. Okay. Are you there, Teresa? Hi, what's your question? Hello. Hello. Um, my question is, my son has diabetes and insipidus. Um, he's 29 years old, and he's pretty miserable. He can't, like, keep water. Like, he said he wakes up in the middle of the night. It feels like a desert is in his throat, like he's so thirsty. Just wondering what you recommend to help him with that. Yeah, it's... A, um so what I want to do, Teresa, is I, I don't want to open up a can of worms because uh, that could be probably a 15-minute discussion. But I want to say I have a video on diabetes insipidus, which is very different than other types of diabetes. Um, but I will say it involves uh, reducing um, stress in the adrenals and cortisol. Um, and the other thing that I would highly recommend, if I were you, is get him on the basic thing that I recommend for all diabetics. Uh, which is healthy keto, intermittent fasting, that's the best thing that he, he should do right now. So um, do that and watch the video. Just search it on, on YouTube, and I, I, I cover it extensively. Thanks, Teresa. And Janice, you're from San Diego. You had a question. Yes, I am. Yes. Um, I have a question about nasal congestion. Mm -hmm. um, I've had this probably for the last couple of years. Um, I've been on keto for almost a year, and I don't notice anything different about it. But the nasal congestion only hits about 8 o'clock in the evening 
and then I really can't breathe much at night with it. Um, also, a weird thing is that I'll have, I'm 57 years old, and I feel like I'll have like a, a mild hot flash, which will then open the whole nasal thing up, and then it'll just go away. So I cannot figure out what this is. Okay. So the first thing I would want to do, what I would recommend with you, is to make sure you're doing the healthy keto and intermittent fasting like I recommend in my book. If not, go to that first because um, you could be just needing some help with just getting the basic things in there. That being said, I would eliminate, number two, I would eliminate dairy, okay, because dairy could be an issue. The next thing is like, where are you going into a different room at 8 o'clock? Like, are you going to your room? There could be some mold in your room. There could be something that you're reacting to. The next thing I would recommend is I just did a video on this, and there's a remedy called ammonium chloride. You can get it online and take some of that. Um, Let's see, the video is on an expectorant. But ammonium chloride is acidifier. It's wonderful for helping clear mucus out. And it, it drops the pH, makes you a little more acidic, and that speeds up the immune system to overcome these things. And it's also good for arthritis, too. So ammonium chloride, that's what I would recommend. So those three things. Thanks, Janice. All right, Karen, what do we have for answers? Okay. Well, most people, and this is bringing up a lot of different questions and conversations here, but uh -huh. most people are saying grass-fed. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you my answer. You give me your answer. My answer is organic. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, the answer, the... the, the I mean, um, it's like kind of two different things. A lot of people are going, well, this is all about meat. Yeah. Right. Right. We're talking meat about meat or chicken meat. or yeah. eggs. Um, yeah. So there's, there, it's some of these guys know that there's a little more to what's going on here. Okay. Yeah. So let me just, I want to talk about this for a second because I think it's important. I'm going to be releasing a video on this shortly. Um, if something is grass fed, it doesn't mean it's grass finished. Right. And people, some and, people were mentioning that. And too. finished means fattening when they fatten the cattle the last four months or longer. So when someone's grass-fed and they're doing grains and it's not organic, they can be giving them GMO grains, even if it's grass-fed. So the difference between organic is organic is without pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, insecticides. Which grass could be. Grass could be correct. sprayed. And without antibiotics, without hormones. Right. But you're still doing the grains. So you're... So we're still going to have a problem with the, the cow eating the grains, and, uh, which is another set of issues. But, it, but the most important thing to bring up on this topic of organic versus grass-fed is the chemical in, those, in the grains, if it's not organic. And if that it's, is if glyphosate. If it's not organic and it's not grass-finished. Right. Uh, right. It's called glyphosate. Glyphosate is Roundup Ready. Um, there's some serious links to all sorts of health problems. You can look it up. Uh, I will do a video on that. But that's the chemical that you want to avoid at all costs because, Karen, in, even in the United States, they put in our environment 80,000 metric tons of glyphosate every single year. Did you know that? Did, what's a metric ton? You told me. I, I don't know. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. <laughs> it's lots. It is a lot. So we're getting hit with this. And, and there's... There's no monitoring in the environment. They don't even monitor it. So it's, it's, a, it's a time bomb. So w what does that mean? It means that the most important thing is to make sure that you're not being exposed to that. So you have organic is a little more important. Grass-fed is also very important for nutrients. Uh, you're getting more omega-3 fatty acids, other fats, and vitamin A and vitamin uh, E as well. So if you're going to... If you're going to do um, beef, I would try to go grass-fed organic, grass-fed, grass-finished organic. That's the ideal scene. The combo. Yeah. Which some people did say. So They're right on it. So I just want to, what I'm trying to do, Karen, is just increase the awareness of all the data so people can have the knowledge to decide better when they're, you know, buying food. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know that and you're consuming this, you can be at risk. And you also can ask at your grocery store because we, 
we have a grocery store that has one brand that's pasture raised organic eggs. No, right? it's just, there's no organic, it's just pasture. No, there, there is. They yeah. just didn't oh, right. have it. Okay. So, so my point being, you can ask. You can ask your stores to, to have it or to carry it. Or yeah. just seek it out, you know, find where in your area. They're not, look, they're not that much, they're not any more expensive than organic eggs. And depending on where you go, they're not that much more expensive than regular now, eggs. Now, I know it's going to come up on the comments. Mm -hmm. They're going to say, well, I can't afford it, it's too expensive. And my response is this. Um, you're going to do intermittent fasting, so you're going to not eat as frequent, so you're going to save a lot of money because you're going to do one, maybe two meals a day. So I just you know, helped you kind of look at that differently. Right. And, then and the snacking food is the most expensive food. I mean, right. the meat, okay, but you don't need to have, you know, 12 ounces of meat at every meal, not even in one no. meal. You shouldn't be having that much. Right. And then the other thing to do is... organic vegetables, you can get any grocery store these days. And, and work on trying to get a, maybe a better job so you can afford this. Okay. This healthy thing. And the last time I checked, Fritos in the big bag are like eight bucks for a friend. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you bought them for a friend. Right. Hey, right. Laura, you're from uh, St. Louis, Missouri. You had a question. Go ahead. Hi, good morning. Good morning. And thank you for taking my call today. Sure. Um, I really appreciate all of the work that you've done and, and helped to educate me about keto and intermittent fasting, too. So thank you very much. Sure. So I, um, I started, I, I've been kind of more on the low carb uh, for about 15 years. I, I <coughs> was on South Beach many years ago and understood more about glycemic indexes and things like that. I started keto May 1st of this year. My, my question has to do with leg edema that I've experienced. It's worse in my left leg than in my right leg, and that began probably about in January of 2019, so prior to starting keto. Um, it, it got worse. I started keto May. It got worse over time, and by June, I went to see my doctor just to have some blood work done and make sure that there wasn't something going on internally that might be causing this. Um, blood work came back perfect, other than I was deficient in vitamin D. Um, then... Uh, and uh, so since then, they, he's just said, oh, well, um, you know, just wear compression stockings and just, you know, deal with it. Right. I've been doing that. Um, I just had to go back for a checkup the other day for, for my 2020 medical benefits. It's required. And I discussed it again and said, you know, is it, can't we figure out why this is happening and address the cause? <laughs> and he said, well, it's probably your keto, even though it oh, right. started. Keto. So, so I have a question um, for you. And I'm I not some, giving I have a up keto and intermittent fasting. Okay. I have a question for you. Um, okay. So yeah. how many cups of vegetables do you consume a day? You know, I, I don't measure it, but I, I, so I can't say that I meet your 10 cup, but I do consume quite a lot of vegetables, okay. in, including spinach, um, the different, different salads, broccoli, um, cabbage. I, I love uh, kimchi. And Good. fermented vegetables, too. And are you doing any dairy? Yes. Okay. Are you doing any type of, like, keto desserts or, like, the uh, almond flour type recipes and that type of thing? Um, I, I like fat bombs, but I don't consume them on a daily basis. Um, okay. But, but I, I will make them. Okay. And are you taking any type of um, nutritional yeast? I, I did start to do that in the beginning because I found your video about that, and I was taking that on a daily basis. It, it, I, I'll, I'll admit I've just forgotten to do it for quite a while now, but it didn't seem to really make any difference. Okay. All right. I'm going to just kind of put you on hold and tell you what I would recommend, Laura, because uh, sometimes when you have it, um, anything that you uh, do and it's worse, so you just want to make sure that it aligns with um, kind of the ideal scene, which is healthy keto, and that's why I'm talking about increasing potassium. If you do a blood test and your potassium shows up normal, it doesn't mean anything because most of the potassium, which is 98%, is located on the inside of the cell, not in the blood. Same thing with magnesium. 99% of all the magnesium is located inside the cell, not inside the blood. So you could be deficient. It's just not showing up. And so that's why I recommend the large quantities of vegetable or, and or some electrolytes to increase that. Uh, you may need to adjust your salt, maybe not have as much salt. Uh, low vitamin B1 can create edema, 
uh, even low vitamin D can, can swell up the edema. But the only thing is that w the clue that I have is on the left side. Anything on the left side usually is relates to maybe a sluggishness within the cardiovascular system. So I would increase your D and uh, maybe, uh, maybe even a B complex that's natural and see if it doesn't get rid of it because it could just be the heart's not pushing fluid out as much. Thanks for your call, Laura. All right, Karen. Okay. So, oh, Chris, are we going to see more cooking videos? Are you going to do any more cooking videos? You know what? I was going to talk to you about that. I, know. I really want to jump into that. So we'll, let's plan some. I, know. I need to hire an assistant. We could do that. Local people. We can do that. Apply. Oh, yeah. We yeah. will do that. Okay. Uh, but then here's a question. Um, <laughs> can you please make a video about intermittent fasting while on keto or low carb and following a balanced, healthy diet? That's a really good idea. <laughs> um, just so you know, um, for those of you that are new to the maybe new to this channel, I have a lot of videos on intermittent fasting. The best way to find them is go to drberg.com under the blog because I have them categorized under intermittent fasting. There's a ton of them. Tons. Um, so 4, go there, 000. and I have some really good videos just for you. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I, it's, it's going to have your name on it waiting for you. Okay. So Helen on Facebook says um, she's eating one meal a day. She's on keto. Mm -hmm. um, Oh yeah, she says she's she's hungry all the time, and she mm. feels it's because she's not getting enough potassium. You know, this is a really really interesting thing she said that reminds me um, of a video I should do. Um, when I talk about satisfying your hunger, mm -hmm. people hungry all the time. I always talk about increasing your fat, getting into ketosis. But if you actually are low on potassium mm -hmm. and magnesium that will cause hunger as well because your body will detect that there's something missing. It's so That's why when you eat, um, this is why it's so hard to consume 10 cups of salad a day to get all your potassium because there's nothing in your body that will crave potassium. You crave salt, but not potassium. What do you mean there's nothing in your body that will There's crave. no signal that says eat more salad. Oh. There's no signal that says I need more potassium. I see. So, it's very difficult to overeat um, nutrient-dense foods. I mean, it's like, because it's satisfying, right? It's mm -hmm. like, you start eating like vegetables, like, okay, I'm done, right? After like so much. So what this person needs to do is um, to eat more nutrient-dense foods to get more of these minerals. You can also enhance it with electrolytes, um, but the point is that that, if you're still hungry, you're not satisfied, it's probably you need more minerals. Mm -hmm. Potassium is at the top of the list because that one is the most difficult to get. Well, and the potassium is in the electrolytes, but I'll tell you, when I use that veggie solution, yeah. I'm, I have a sensation of being full, even though it's just a liquid. Uh, I am not hungry for hours. The veggie solution is a, um, it's a very interesting plant protein um, that is raw and it's a very clean protein. There's very high amounts of pro, uh, chlorophyll in plant-based protein, and it's very satisfying. And uh, I don't really talk about it much, but it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, but I will mention one thing, Karen. The, the gentleman that asked about endurance with exercise, mm -hmm. potassium will give you a lot of energy with exercise. So um, this is why I like the electrolyte powder. When, when Even when I take it, it's like almost I just have this rush of energy. Mm -hmm, me too. I'm like, I'm ready to go. So it's not just about salt when you work out. You do need the potassium. Do you know why? Because they balance. Well, potassium is needed in every single cell in the body as a potassium. There's, so, there's a potassium pump oh, yeah. that helps you generate energy. I, I knew that, too. You knew that. I knew that, too. I know that. didn't you know that. that's what you were asking for. Hey, Sid, you're from Australia. You had a question. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, Dr. Hi. Bird. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Yeah, great. So uh, I've recently started watching your videos on your YouTube channel, and uh, I have a question regarding the percentage of uh, fat, protein, and the uh, mathematical chart that we need to follow. 
Uh, in one of your recent videos, I heard that we need to consume 0.8 grams of protein for the amount of for, for individual kilogram of your body weight. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm a person who is 100 kilograms, mm -hmm. and um, that means I need to consume 80 grams of protein, and putting in all the ratios in place, mm -hmm. uh, the fat would be 300 grams, and uh, carbs would be 20 grams. So, it would give a total of 3,100 100 calories. So, is it okay that I consume such high amounts of calories in one day meal, uh, all mad meal. Okay, so I think there's one little factor that you're not realizing. Um, when you go up with that much protein based on your size, you don't want to go up with the percentages of carbohydrates. You want to keep your carbs um, not at 20%, but 5% of the total calories. So 5% which comes out to between 20 and 50 grams. So it's just going to be very small amounts. And this is why a lot of vegetables don't provide a lot of calories, just nutrients and very lower amounts of carbs because it's mostly fiber. Um, the other thing is with, with your protein comes fat. So you don't, almost don't have to worry about the fat because that'll come with the protein. This question about protein is a question that's an individual thing. You want to try it, see how you feel. And if you feel good, great. If you don't, you can either increase it or decrease it. You've got to play around with this because it's, there's no perfect magical formula. Some people who are athle athletes need 1.2 grams of protein per every kilogram of body weight. So that's more. Some people need a little less. Um, it really depends on your age, um, your physical fitness, and uh, all the other factors in the video. So I would... Um, probably not do that many calories unless you're trying to gain weight. Um, I would keep your calories maybe at, um, I don't know, 2,200 um, per day. Okay, thanks, Sid. All right, Karen. Okay, so um, someone has chronic inflammation. How long is there a certain time period when you start to see results after having chronic inflammation? It should happen fast. I mean, I'm talking within days if you do it correct. If there's a couple things that I want to say about that. Um, the benefit of um, dropping your carb is going to help you with inflammation, but also intermittent fasting is really going to help you with inflammation. If you want to take it one step further, add some vitamin D. And I'm talking at least 20,000 I use, mm. maybe even 30,000. Your, um, your inflammation will just like go bye-bye. But and then there might be a couple little things, like for example, dairy. You might need to eliminate dairy because that can create inflammation. Um, and also, there could be a food allergy. Like sometimes when people do keto, they do a lot of nuts, for example, which are, uh, especially the almonds, are high in oxalates, and so is spinach. So the oxalate could create inflammation. So I have a lot of videos on this, so I, that's what I would recommend. Okay, good. So here's another one. And I think you might have answered this with the veggie, with the potassium, but uh, this guy is uh, keto for one month, in ketosis, eating greens, but still craving at night. If you're eating enough fat, um, I would look at two things. I would adjust the, the frequency of meals. I would do like one meal, is that one meal a day? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then what I would do is, if you really need to lose a lot more weight, I would go to one meal every other day. Mm. Okay, That's the tricky. And then at the same time, and this is really, really important, you need to beef up, no pun intended, your nutrients. And some of these things that, that I have, I, I try to help people solve it, like the veggie solution, which is a concentrated green, or the wheatgrass juice powder. Those are super nutrient-dense not just with vitamins, but mainly the phytonutrients in the wheatgrass juice powder. The veggie solution has the nutrients and the fiber, so it's like the whole vegetable. One scoop is equivalent to three, no, two cups of vegetables. So um, it's a, and you're getting a, a good high quality. One scoop is, do, is equivalent to two cups? Two, two to three cups of vegetables, depending wow. on what you're. Um, I overdid it yesterday. Yeah, you might. Can have. you overdo it? I doubt it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm still here. So. I doubt it. You're still alive, Karen. I am still living. I'm going to go to Virginia from Virginia? Anchorage, Atlanta. Atlanta what? 
Virginia? Okay, yeah, that's your name. <laughs> I'm, not like, I'm confusing the name with the, with the state. Go ahead, Virginia. Hello, Dr. Berg. Um, I was just um, recent, well, not recently, but I had a, a radioactive iodine to have my thyroid removed along with um, a hysterectomy. And I was wondering if it's kind of the same person previously just didn't have the, gy the gastric bypass. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you had any suggestions on um, the supplements. Yeah. Are you? It would help with the weight loss and energy. I got it. What, what, um, thyroid medication you're taking? Are you taking Synthroid? I take Synthroid and I also take Naturethroid because I guess it has like a T3 in there. Yeah. So, nat so I take a low dose of the Synthroid and a low dose of the Naturethroid together. Okay, Naturethroid is a desiccated adrenal. That means it's a, it's a pig extract of the thyroid gland, which I really like. Um, there's other versions too, like Natural Thyroid. There's another version called Armor. And those natural desiccated adrenal have not just the T4, which is in the Synthroid, but it also has um, T3, as well as calcitonin, which no one's talking about. Stay tuned for my video on that, but that will help prevent bone loss. But if you don't have a thyroid, um, it could mean, and you have this fatigue and things, it could be that it's not a matter of consuming those hormones. It could mean that you're not converting the hormones. I'm talking about T4 to T3, and you're not getting enough T3. So, if you stay tuned, next couple days, I will release a video on how to get the thyroid to work better, and that has everything to do with the conversion and what nutrients you should take to get conversion. You're going to definitely need selenium. That's like the top of the list. You're going to definitely need some iodine from sea kelp, zinc, vitamin D, uh, B2, B6, and I talk about this in the video. Those are some key uh, nutrients that will help get your energy back. Um, but I think you're on the right track with what you're taking. I, I highly um, recommend really looking at some of these desiccated formulas. And I, I'm also going to release a video on if someone reacts negatively to a natural thyroid, what that means and what to do. Like if they get really tired, for example. That could mean something, and you'll have to stay tuned for what that means. All right, Karen. Yes. Do you have a good, good question do. for me? I do. I have yeah. a good one that just came in. Um, what if I have an eight-hour eating window? I'm on intermittent fasting, yeah. and I have my lunch at noon, and then I have dinner at eight. Okay. Okay. You mean kind at seven? Of a seven? Eight hour? One, okay, two, good. Okay, good. Whatever. One, two, it's kind three, of a big four, window, five, right? Six, seven, eight. Oh, you're right. Eight. Terrible at math. Can you say that again? You're right. Hey. Okay, so um, if I eat keto snacks in that window, yeah. can I do that? Because that's my eating window. Am right. I still intermittent fasting or does that ruin everything? I think it's that's a good question. You have this period of time where you're fasting, right? Where you're, and then you have the food window. But guess what? You are fasting in the food window too. Um, I think it's, if you need to snack, definitely snack within the window if you have to, but preferably don't snack because we want a couple windows. We want a couple fasting periods. Um, you'll just have more benefit that way. But I do understand that um, some people just can't do that right off the bat. But I would, if you're tempted, you need more fat and nutrient-dense foods, mm -hmm. Karen, at mm -hmm. the meal so you're not um, deficient. Um, especially if you're like, if you're just doing a lot of fats, well, guess what? A lot of the fats out there do not have a lot of nutrients. Right. And things like um, keto, you know, almond waffles. Right. So Low it, nutrients. You Low have nutrients. a big stack of keto waffles and a couple strips of bacon. Not enough. It's not enough nutrients to have your body go, oh, I, I'm well fed. It's bulk, but... It isn't the bulk that your body is feeling satiated by. Right. Because um, you will lose some weight, and you, but you might plateau. Initially, but you might probably, not, you'll plateau, right. Right. And you might not have full energy. You might just not, things are not going to work right. Why? Because you're missing nutrients. Uh, and um, that I keep telling people that, but someday it will sink in. Yeah. And I can attest 
personally attest to the fact that you can eat keto, you can eat totally keto, and just eat three times a day or eat every three hours during the day or have lunch, three o'clock snack, a six o'clock meal, a 10 o'clock snack, and gain weight. Right. Or fluid. Right. Uh, because I've experienced it. So you, right. have to, you have to look at that and really monitor. What are you doing? What do you need to take out? Are you eating, especially if you're eating when you're not really hungry? Because everybody else is eating. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create gonna a little card that you put in your wallet. It's a cutout card to remind people of these key things. So that way, I'm going to produce that. I'll send it out. And you guys can cut it out. And that way, it's like keep reminding them, here's the basics. These are the most important things. Just go ahead and stick with this, and you'll be good to go. Good to if go. you're interested in that card, just say yes or no. I'm not interested. If, if you're not lame, interested, say, lame. say no, Dr. Berg. You don't have to go through the time to do that. <laughs> I don't really need that. I'll never look at the card in my wallet. So if you want, and then that will save me time for doing that. But if you want me to do you it, just, just say yes or no. You can just write it backwards on your forehead every time you look in the mirror. Let's go to Gail. Oh, wait. I wasn't done. Okay, Gail. Gail, you're, you're from New York. You had a question. Yes, hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, hi. I, first, I want to thank you, Dr. Berg, for educating me on the body, my body. Um, I've looked at your videos for the past year, and I'm learning every, you know, things that I never knew before. Mm, great. Thank you very much for that. I also um, was thinking of joining your Weight Watchers, uh, not Weight Watchers, sorry, your weight loss program mm -hmm. for the year, the membership. Yeah. Um, because I have a problem with what I should eat first um, when I start my fast. Okay. Um, like, you know, when um, I've broken the fast. Oh, I right. I really don't want, I, I have a problem with, um, I'm allergic to caffeine, so I don't drink any kind of caffeinated products. So, but I need the energy yeah. when I get up in the morning. I need something to help me. So I, I have purchased the potassium um, packet, the, um, the Electrolyc packet. Um, I have the meal replacement shake, um, the um, potassium, the, um, with the yeast, nutritional yeah, nutritional yeast, yeast. Uh, tablet, mm -hmm. and to start helping me along. What should I do first? Say when I get up in the morning. I've changed my window now to like nine to five that I'm eating. Okay. And then you know. Okay. Yeah, I think you'll like this the membership site because that'll allow you because you just need these specific. The membership site is all the specifics and the details that are uh, the devil is in the details. Uh, it's like just so many things that if you knew, you could just go really good. And then also be able to help others. Um, what you're asking is um, what to eat in the very first part of the day. The thing is that when you wake up in the morning, you just slept for a period of, let's say, six, seven, eight hours, right? Ideally, you're already in a fast. You should ride the wave and see how long you can go. If you can only go till 9 o'clock, then... Something is off to of what you're eating. So we need to evaluate what you're eating because I think your carbs might be too high. But the goal is to go longer and longer in the morning. Now, I think about 8 o'clock in the morning is when you have the cortisol spike. A lot of people might have a little bit of hunger at 8 o'clock, but then it goes away because just a little spike of cortisol. It's temporary and it comes down. So try to push through, go longer and longer to the point where you can go at, at uh, 10, 11, and 12 o'clock, and now you just basically have your first meal at like noon. That would be very important. If you want energy, there's a couple ways to do it. Um, there's a mitochondrial um, energy supplement you can take or the MCT oil. You can have that in the morning. You don't have to drink it with caffeine. You can just drink a tablespoon. That will give you energy because it gives your brain ketones. Uh, but try that, Gail, and I think um, you'll really enjoy the, also the membership site because that has over 200 videos that you'll get even more information. All right. Okay, so first, yeah, uh, you have to say hello to your daughter and your son. Ollie and Ian are watching. Oh, really? Wow, that's cool. That hello, Ollie and Ian. Wave. Everybody, you have to say hi to Ollie and Ian. Send hearts and thumbs up and stuff like that. 
And then uh, a, a random uh, message here. Uh, someone who does keto and IF all week. Mm -hmm. Great during the week, but cheats all weekend. Yeah. What do you say? Well, it's better than the five and two plan where you're actually eating like all week. garbage all week <laughs> and then you eat healthy on the, the weekend. That's better. The, the thing is that I know people, um, I know this might be shocking, it's to Steve, but not everyone could be as perfect as Steve. Um, Steve is perfect. Some people have to, you know, do like 80% or 90%. I am that, without fault. Right. So, and this is like, I always, I always take the viewpoint that everyone is actually doing it 100%, but I probably shouldn't because not everyone is. And so probably Ollie and Ian are perfect examples of, of keto and IF all the time. Well, right, we'll Ian? talk about that when we get home with those kids. Right, Ian? But the, the point is that um, I think that something is better than nothing. And what I'm trying to do in some of these videos, especially recently, is give people um, the ability to differentiate between what's really, really bad and which is sort of bad but not too bad. <laughs> so sort you could, of bad. Like for example, french fries and uh, potato chips. I just released a video today. And like which one's worse? A hamburger bun. Well when you actually see the difference, if you're in a situation where someone's at gunpoint forcing you to eat something, you know you can go for the this versus that. So, so what's the answer to that question? You're going to have to watch the video. <gasps> Okay, what if I have a big old cheeseburger and I don't have the bun because I'm being really good and I coat it with ketchup? Yeah, well, the problem is that ketchup is, is pretty significant because that amount of sugar is going to cause that protein to get really sticky in your blood. And it's going to go in there and create a lot of problems with different tissues. And like especially what? if you do, like in the brain, um, as... Um, it's going to actually create more insulin resistance. Well, what if it's organic ketchup with organic sugar? It doesn't matter. It's the sugar with protein that is the problem. Right. And then you have also the heat of uh, sugar with a fat. So um, the point is that I'm, I understand that some people are not going to be perfect, but at least you have the awareness and of all this knowledge so you can actually not go completely over the, uh, the deep end and you have oh, choices. Off the cliff. Yeah. So Don't go off the cliff. Right. Man. You know, but I want you cliff. to be—I want you to be aware when you're going off the cliff. Be aware that you're plummeting. Versus like, off the oh cliff. my gosh, how did I end up with this disease? I have no idea. Right. I don't want that to happen. I no. want you to know this is how but I end up with okay. the disease. Okay, I have this disease because I. So refused. I'm a cripple. I'm in blind and diabetic. I'm in pain. And I know medicated. why I did. We're so. <laughs> All right, let's go to Jason <laughs> from Arizona. Stop us, Jason. Hey, Jason. How are you doing? Good. How is everything going? It's going good yeah, so far. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, oh, that's great. <laughs> uh, I've been listening to you uh, for quite a while since last year, and uh, you're incredible in the things that you say because, again, just like what everybody says, we're learning a lot of new stuff. Uh, but my question is on turmeric. Uh, I've been taking turmeric every day. And I just wanted to know if there's like any kind of side effects or anything, or or uh, have anybody said anything about that? Or usually it's just more for the healthier body. Yeah. Okay. So turmeric is. Um, I think it's uh, one of the most. It's that one of the highest um, um, herbs that have phytonutrients in them. I mean, I I think it's great as um, an antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory and an antimicrobial thing. And so when you take these concentrated herbs like turmeric, and there's plenty of other ones like garlic, onion, what you're doing is you're um, adding more protection for the damage that's happening with aging and maybe some of the chemicals you're exposed to. So it's, a, it's an extra added protection. You have the vitamins and minerals, things like that, but then you have the phytonutrients on top. Turmeric is just loaded with that. Green tea is another one that's loaded with that. So I, I don't think you can overdo it. Um, and it's a very good thing to take. And I would highly recommend to continue it. Thanks, Jason. Now, next week, guys, we're, we're going to do the show on Thursday, Thursday, not Friday. I'll send you a video to remind you.
Okay. Widescreen. There we go. So what? Thursday. Everybody, type in what day are we going to be? Is eleven o'clock? Thursday. 11 and did anyone want me to do the cutout? Yes. There was yet. Yeah, there one, were yeses. One, that one was person? way before. We got. Okay, I'll do There's it. There's a couple. A couple people want it. Okay. Maybe what you could do is you could instead of making them, you could just have a downloadable file for them, and they could print it and, and cut it out. That's what I'm out. talking about. Oh. I'm not going to make it and mail it. That would be a lot of postage. Well, you could stick it in the, when they do orders. Or, or I could actually have, have them cut it out on a piece of paper. <laughs> you could have them draw it themselves. That's right. Okay. Thank you for your attention, okay. your wonderful comments. We will see you next Thursday. Stay tuned for some real interesting videos coming up tomorrow. Okay, and bye, Ollie and Ian. Set a good example. Slow down on the not setting a good example on the weekends. All right, see you guys. Okay, bye.